All right, so reach our first location. We are going to start from the giant flow tube of the sixth of the water. And from here, we are going to head about two and a half notches to the right of northeast until we reach the bulb, uh, blah, until we reach the bulb zone. Oh, what the freak was I about to say? Now, going to the bulb zone, you're going to want to bring a seam off with a Mark II or Mark I depth module. And you're also going to want to have perimeter defense on that seam off. Now, aside from your seam off with perimeter defense and your Mark II depth module, you're also going to bring your stasis rifle. Now, in terms of the thrusts that you're going to run into here, there are three three main threats that you run into here the first are bone sharks which are like small aggressive creatures they're super annoying and they can destroy your vehicle pretty quickly if they gang up on you so just watch out for them you've got ampules ampules a little more dangerous than bone sharks they have a lot of health so you can't really you know like fight them to death or anything you also can't use power air defense on them so your best bet is going to be to either run away or use a stasis rifle to freeze him. And the last thing that you run into are mesmers, which can sort of like hypnotize you. If you get too close, they'll damage you, but an easy way to counter them is to just stay in your vehicle. But if they do sort of like hypnotize you, then you just have to look away, like in another direction and back up and it'll break you free of the hypnotization thingy majiggy and you'll be all right. You can start looking for all the resources that you'll find in the bulb zone. Now, in the bulb zone, there are two main out. Oh, what's free? You'll, there are two main outcrops that you'll be able to find here. You'll be able to find sandstone outcrops, and you'll be able to find shale outcrops. Uh, as we can see right there, there's sandstone and shale. So sandstone, you can get lead, gold, and silver from. So those are three resources you can find here. Shale, you can get lithium, diamonds, and I believe it's gold. Those are some resources you can get just from the outcrops. And aside from that, you can also find a bunch of metal salvage lying around. So that's some extra titanium, large titanium deposits, large gold deposits, and large lithium deposits. You can also find rubies. You aren't going to find the rubies. Oh, there's a gold deposit right there. Um, you're gonna find the rubies sort of like in the caves, because they're not really gonna spawn like on the surface, but like in the caves of the bulb zone, you can find rubies. Let me see if I can find one for y'all. Oh, yep, there's one right there. So yeah, we got rubies. Are y'all for real? And other than that, that's about all the resources that you'll be able to find here, but that's quite a lot. You know, you got three, three deposits, uh, five potential resources that you can get from the outcrops. There's also these lava geysers, a resource if you want to count that as well. So thermal energy is also a resource here. But other than that, let's head on to the next spot. All right, to reach the next spot, we're going to start from the giant quartz with the six out of the water again. And we're going to do this for every spot, just so you know. And from here, we are going to head uh, one and a half notches to the right of northwest until we reach the northwestern blood kelp cell. North blood kelp zone, whatever you want to call it. Northern blood kelp zone, it's all the same thing. Now going here, you're going to want to bring the same stuff you did last time. So you're going to bring your seam off with a Mark II depth module. You're just going to bring your stasis rifle. You are going to want to bring your knife here because there are there is a creature that you will need the knife for. Now in terms of the hostile creatures that you'll run into here, you got bone sharks, which we talked about at the last spot. Uh, they're basically the same here. Small aggressive creatures, use perimeter defense against them and don't shine any ice on them because that'll draw their attention. The other threat that you ran into at the last spot is also going to be here. So you're also going to run into ampules, which are again the same as they were at the last spot. Don't shine any lights on them. You can't use perimeter defense against them. Oh, you do need perimeter defense on your seamob. I don't know if I said that. Sorry. Don't shine any lights on them. Your best bet is to use the safe rifle against them to get them to freeze them and run away. The newer threats you're going to run into here are warpers, which can teleport you out of your vehicle or while you're swimming around. So the best thing you can do against them is either to run away or you can attack them with your knife until they take an up to walk away. The other threats you'll run into here are crab squids, which can disable your vehicle and do some pretty good damage to you. So a good way to avoid their little EMP thingy is to stay super high above or below them. You can also hit them with perimeter defense to get them to run away before they can set off their little EMP attack. And the last thing you'll run into, maybe, is the Ghost Leviathan. Now, if the Ghost Leviathan does come near you, your best two options is going, no, best three options are gonna be to either run, use perimeter defense, or hit it with a stasis rifle. But now that we are here, you can start looking for the resources. So the two biggest resources that you'll be able to find here are is, are is, what did I just say? Two resources that you'll be able to find here is blood oil and deep shrooms. Now, just like at the last spot, you're also going to have three different resource deposits that you'll be able to find here. So the first one is going to be your copper deposit. So there's also going to be gold deposits here and lead deposit. Other than that, though, you'll also be able to find uranite crystals in these caves, as we can see right now. I just passed by some, but now I'm looking at them now. You'll also be able to find ruby. I don't know what I just said. 
But yeah, Ruby's another resource you'll be able to find here, just like you did at the last spot. And the only outcrop that you'll be able to find here as well is Shale outcrop, which can contain, again, diamonds, gold, or lithium. All good, pretty, pretty good resources. Uranite deposits, completely forgot. So four deposits, there's four resource deposits you can find here. So copper, copper deposits, lead deposits, gold deposits, and uranite crystal deposits in the caves uh no i think that's about all the resources you'll be able to find here again pretty good it's actually i think this this one's actually better than the last one is that the ghost of i think coming at you all right and to reach the next location we are going to start from the giant core to the six of the water once again like i've been saying and from here we are going to head about one and a half notches to the right of west until we reach the dunes mile now going to the dunes bomb you're going to want to bring again your seamoth with a mark two depth module and perimeter defense you're also going to bring your stasis rifle a knife and a sea glide and in terms of the threats that you're running to here you're going to the biggest threat that you're running to here are reaper leviathans because there are multiple leviathans in this pile same thing with the ghost leviathan if they do come near you your best bet is going to be to either run away from them hit them with perimeter defense or use your stasis rifle to freeze them and give yourself a chance to run away Already and now we are in the dunes biome. So look at that. All right So dunes bomb is gonna be a little bit different than the other two So in terms of outcrops you can find here you can find limestone outcrops and sandstone outcrops Okay, so with limestone outcrops you'll be able to get copper and titanium off of copper or titanium And then there'll be sandstone outcrops. You got gold silver or uh, lead now for deposits again you'll notice that every one of these spots has three or more deposits so at this spot you can find four different deposits the first one as we can see right now are silver deposits pretty good pretty good next we got the titanium deposit quartz deposits and you can also find salt deposits which i mean salt deposits aren't that good but, you know something's better than nothing you can also find rubies here as you can see I found sort of in this like little mini cave, whatever you want to call this. I don't, I don't really know what it's called. And I believe you can also find metal salvage here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Different. Never mind. Yeah. So metal salvage is also another thing. Good source of titanium. And yeah, I believe that's all you can really find here in terms of resources. Still pretty good. You got four different deposits, two different, um, uh, what you call it, two different outcrops, rubies. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so you can find gel sacks here. So that's another resource you can find here. Other than that, let's head on to our next spot all right and to reach our next spot we're going to start from the giant close to the six up out of the water once again and from here we are going to head straight northwest until we reach the northwestern mushroom forest now going to the northwestern mushroom forest all you're going to want to bring is your seamoth with its mark 3 depth module as well as its perimeter defense you don't really need your stasis rifle here but you can bring it if you want to be extra safe you also don't need your knife so just the stasis rifle if you want to be extra safe the only hostile creature that you'll run into here are bone sharks and even then they're in super little numbers same as before just hit them with perimeter defense or outrun them and don't shine any lights on them because that'll draw their attention all right and we have arrived at the mushroom forest as you can tell because you'll see these giant mushroom trees all right so mushroom forest pretty good and dense biome so here in terms of outcrops you'll be able to find every single type of outcrops you'll be able to find your limestone outcrops which can contain copper or titanium you can find your sandstone outcrops which can contain uh gold lead or silver you'll also be able to find the shale outcrops which can contain lithium, diamonds, and or gold. And in terms of deposits, as we can see, you'll be able to find lithium deposits here. You can find copper deposits. And I believe the last one is salt deposits again. Yeah, there's one right there. You'll also be able to find just random lithium, like sort of just on the ground, as you can see right here, sort of next to the trees or just randomly throughout the bottom that you can pick up. So that's also pretty good. And lastly, you'll also be able to find gel sacks here. And the good thing about gel sacks is all you really need is like one to two of them. And then you can just, you know, use your knife on them, get the gel sacks, and then you can just grow them at your base. So all right, and to reach the last spot on our list, we are going to start cleaning a giant forest with this just out of the water one last time. And from here, we are going to head southwest until we reach the sparse roots. 
Now going here, all you're going to need is your SEMA with the MR2 depth module. You don't actually need perimeter defense. You don't need your stasis rifle or anything. And in terms of threats here, you're not going to run into any because there's no hostile creatures here aside from like tiger plants. But the tiger plants, for one, they can't move and they sort of shoot like super slow spines at you. They're also re really easy to get rid of and avoid. So no really, no real hostile creatures here that can chase you around or anything. Alrighty, we are now in the sparse reef. Now, in the sparse reef, in terms of outcrops, you can find limestone outcrops here and shale outcrops. Again, limestone outcrops you can find copper or titanium off of, and the shale outcrops you can find diamonds, lithium, or gold from. There's three different types of deposits you can find here. The first, you got quartz, obviously, you can see right here. You can find lithium deposits, as we can see, there's one right here. So, the last deposits you can find here are lead deposits. So, lithium, quartz deposits, and lead deposits, all three different deposits that you can find here so that's pretty good as well and if we go into the caves you'll be able to find gel sacks just like you did at the mushroom course so that's also pretty good and you'll also be able to find a whole lot of rubies in this biome and you go into these caves and look around on the walls there's also the small lithium bit that you can pick up like with your hands so there's small pieces of lithium but yeah that's about all you'll be able to find in this biome in terms of resources which honestly it may not be like the same number or amount as you were able to find at the other places but to be fair the other places were a little more dangerous this is probably the safest spot out of this list and it's still like a pretty good resource rich biome and yeah with that that is all i have for y'all i hope y'all enjoyed thank y'all for watching and i'll see y'all in the next one peace